Trustees, Committee of the Whole meeting for Tuesday, April 7, 2015. Welcome. I now I call the meeting to order with the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Guzan, will you lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Now we would ask for approval of the agenda. A motion for that? I make the motion to approve the agenda as presented. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? The agenda stands. Uh, now I'd like to present John Daly, Director of the Road Commission, of Genesee County Road Commission, who will tell us about Proposal 1. Uh, Super Supervisor Hoffman, uh, members of the Board of Trustees, thank you for this opportunity to address you on... Uh, Is the mic on, John? I think so. Is it? Okay. It's the light screen. <laughs> okay. I need you to talk a little bit louder. Okay. How's that? That's good. Okay. Can you... Everybody can hear now? Okay. Because I saw people in the back screaming a little bit, so mm -hmm. okay. Uh, I'm here to talk a little bit about Proposition 2015-1. I'm not here to talk to you about whether you should vote on it or not. I'm just here to lay out the facts for you and let you reach your own decisions on this. First of all, I would tell you that uh, the legislation is at best medium great sausage coming out of Lansing. I, I wish I could do better than that, but that is what it is. It's also the only, it's the most significant piece of legislation concerning the funding of roads and bridges in Michigan that we've had in 17 years. And it's, when I look at this, there are things in there I will tell you candidly that I don't support. Uh, there are things in there that if I were writing this from scratch that I would not have put in there or I would have put them in there so, somewhat in a different way. Having said that, what I have to look at at the end of the day, if this passes, what's the consequence? What's the impact on Michigan's roads? if it doesn't pass, or if it does pass, for that matter, either way. I, Representative Graves has a very good uh, piece that he put out to everyone, and I would encourage people to uh, read it because it succinctly puts down the pros and cons of 2015, and it states that on May 5th, 2015, the citizens will have an opportunity to vote on Proposition 2015-1, a statewide ballot proposal aimed at road construction and maintenance, currently under Michigan's Constitution. The sales tax at the pump on diesel and, gas and gasoline go primarily to the schools and local governments, not roads. The passage of Proposal 2015 would change this dynamic by A, removing the three cents on the three taxes on fuel, the current 6% sales tax on gasoline and diesel, the additional 19 cents per gallon on gasoline, and the additional 15 cents per gallon gas uh, tax on diesel. Replacing all those taxes with a flat 14.9% wholesale tax paid directly by gas and diesel stations. C, increasing certain vehicle registration fees, and D, dedicating all revenues on the wholesale tax of fuel to the registration fees uh, to transportation. If passed, 2015 is expected to generate 1.2 billion annually for road construction, maintenance, and 116 million annually for public transportation. To replace revenues to schools and local governments lost by dedicating the taxes paid at the fuel pump to transportation, 2015 would increase the sales and use tax on non-fuel taxable items from 6 to 7 percent. If this passed, this is expected to replace the lost revenues as well as generate an annual 
200 million for schools, 115 million for local governments in the form of constitutional revenue sharing, and 173 million for general fund revenues. The legislation tied to the proposal would provide tax relief to certain low and middle income taxpayers throughout the through the earned income tax credit. Passage of Proposal 2015 would also require uh, warranty protections, competitive bidding, and performance-based systems for road construction and maintenance projects. This is an omnibus <coughs> package. Uh, it responds to many of the things that the residents of Michigan have indicated to me and to their legislators over the year that they wanted. First of all, they wanted to see all of the money that was going for fuel taxes, sales tax, that was being charged on roads go to roads. The only way that could change was through a constitutional amendment. I also believe that uh, the thrust of making, of raising the sales tax in order to make the, sc the schools whole for the money they would lose uh, by the sales tax now being changed and going to roads is an appropriate thing to do. I believe our infrastructure is important, but that has to be balanced against the requirements of K through 12 and community colleges. And so I would support that. The proposal dedicates the state sales tax paid at the pump to the upkeep for roads, which is what most people think is happening now, and it's not. It brings it in line to reality. It also indexes the intended wholesale fuel tax to inflation. And frankly, if this had been done in 1997, and that's the last time there was a tax increase for roads, it was in 1997, we would, the roads today would have been in much better shape. He implements a solution to the hole created for schools and local government and revenue sharing by devoting uh, certain current sales tax on fuel to roads by the sales tax increase. There's also equalization of the rate of tax between diesel and gasoline fuel so that when it comes to taxes on fuel, all of the users are paying their fair share. Uh, it enhances K through 12 school funding, which has taken a hit in recent years, and it provides an adequate revenue level of new money, 1.3 billion, between vehicle registration and gas taxes that would allow for meaningful gains in Michigan's road repair offsetting the impact on sales tax uh, increase on lower income earners by restoring the, urge, the earned income tax credit. And we avoid in the future, because all of this would now be guaranteed as a constitutional guarantee, situations in which roads would be pitted against education for funding. What does that mean for Michigan? We're seeing the biggest increases in roads deteriorating that we've seen in the last eight years. Last year we had 5% of the roads that moved, public roads that moved from good to poor condition. Next year they're looking at the projection from the Transportation Asset Management Council is that number will grow to almost 8%. We're reaching a point even here in Genesee County where the road, the road, the cost of repair is no longer in the linear part of the curve. It's starting to become exponential. And what that means is that the dollar value that was additional that was necessary to repair the roads in January of 14, when this campaign kicked off, was at 1.2 billion. It's now at 1.6. And what that Point four def, uh, delta differential represents is the increase in the cost of roads because they're first of all are roads that are becoming that are moving from good condition into poor. The other thing is that there are uh, heavy maintenance alternatives like chip and seal and surface uh, surface overlays, crack sealing, that because of the condition in the road are no longer options. The only option that uh, is open is one of full bone reconstruction. And just before the meeting, uh, Supervisor Hoffman and I were talking about one of those that's in your township, like McCandless uh, Road. And it's exactly that situation. Had we had the funding five, six years ago, 
we could have implemented a more cost-effective approach, but we're now, the road's deteriorated to the point that, frankly, a reconstruction is about the only option. So, I put out a package last week that's simply an engineering statement of the condition of five bridges in the county. Two in Flint Township, one in Atlas Township, one in Flushing Township, one in uh, Mundy Township. And the, the, those are bridges that we need to receive supplemental funding for, additional funding for, to the tune of almost $7 million. Are in five, and we need to receive that in the next five, three years, or within the next five years, we're going to have to close those bridges. Two of them are on primary roads. That's already happened in Macomb County. There's a bridge on 32 Mile Road that had to be closed, but due to solely due to the condition of the bridge, they didn't restrict it. The weight loading on the bridge, they did reduce the landings. That had already occurred. The bridge just got had to reach the point where it was becoming unsafe for the motoring public, and so they had to close it. I don't have a lot of confidence in the ability of the legislature, frankly, to handle this issue. Uh, they consistently avoided dealing with it for 17 years. And to put this back in the hands of the people that have done literally everything they could to avoid making a decision when the stakes are were even low or lower than they are when it goes back because the when it goes back to the legislature we're no longer going to be looking at 1.6 we're going to be looking at 1.8 one thing i'd ask you to keep in mind when you're considering this is <clears throat> if you're like me i have trouble with numbers and i'm not sure exactly what a billion is and as i'm looking at these papers where they talk about 1.2 billion or 115 million here or something like that I keep having to remind myself that a billion's got nine zeros behind it, and a million only has six, and so that means it takes a thousand millions in order to make one million, one billion. So that's the level of funding we're talking about with these thresholds. So it's, it's <coughs> when we get up into the billions, that's that's when things really start becoming scary. I think that the package is a comprehensive package. As I've indicated before, there are things in there that probably, I, if I had my way about it, I wouldn't put them in, but they're there. And we're here now, and this is the package the legislature has given us to vote on. And I would recommend you seriously consider the implications to Genesee County, your township, and Michigan, if that is <coughs> what is Plan B. And to my knowledge, I can't find anyone that has a coherent Plan B to put forward. Any questions that I might be able to answer for you? Yes. Yeah. One of the things I've heard, uh, Mr. Daly, or Dr. Daly, was uh, that about a month ago there was a meeting of the county road commissioners, and that uh, the question was asked uh, if uh, proposal one passes, will there be a need for additional uh, millages for roads? And whoever I was talking to said about half the road commissioners raised their hand, or maybe a little more than half, raised their hand and said, yes, this will not be enough to, uh, to cover the rail repairs that we need. That's correct. And one of the reasons for that is remember that when we do a local reconstruction or heavy maintenance on a local road, that the state statutes require that we get a match from someone else. And Part of the problem is that match, particularly in the rural townships, is, is dealing that match, is dealing with that money. The other problem that's there is that's equally we don't have to deal directly with it, but is the status of the uh, federal highway trust fund because that's also approaching zero simultaneously, and there's a lot of discussion going on in D.C. about the federal fuel tax, even as we speak. The other thing is that one of the rumors that I sort of like an urban legend that I would ask you to check out. Uh, there's a lot of people writing that would like for you to believe that if you raise the fuel tax a penny, that that means that you're going to see a penny in the rise in the cost of fuel. And what I would do is encourage you to go down and take a look at what the prices that are on the Michigan, Ohio, the Michigan, Ohio border and the Michigan, Indiana border. In Ohio, the fuel tax is six and a half cents more per gallon than it is in Michigan as we speak. In Indiana, it's four and a half cents. 
And if you follow, if this logic is true, then the price of fuel in Ohio ought to be six and a half cents more per gallon than it is in Michigan. In Indiana, four and a half cents. That's not the case. If you look at the fuel costs on both sides of the border, they're the same. And the reason is because what's driving the price of fuel at its current price levels is the marketplace, not the tax system. Yeah. Well, I'll just follow up. I, I appreciate the position that you're in, you know, trying to maintain our roads and, and needing money for it. <coughs> but I'm just looking at it as a, you know, and I understand it. I like your analogy that it's medium grade sausage. I, I'm not even sure it means that, but the uh, if we're not even raising enough money to cover the roads, uh, you know, and we're going to need to have additional millages either at our township level or county level, I'm not sure. You know, um, let me, let, here's my analogy, and I use the analogy that this is the road system is like a sinking ship. And some, I've taken on water in the hole of the ship at 50,000 gallons a minute. And the only ship that's in sight shows up and throws me a 25,000 gallon a minute pump. Does that solve my problems? No. What do I do? I do not throw the pump back and say, gee whiz, this is the wrong pump. I'm going to sit here and wait until some other ship shows up, maybe. That's the situation we're in. When this problem goes back to the legislature, again, we're not dealing with anything that's a 1.6, we're closer to 2 billion. And the other thing I would ask you to take a look at, my own personal opinion, is this legislature, the distance between it, the House and the Senate and this legislature is even further than it was in the previous one. Yeah. And I don't mean any disrespect, but I, I kind of view it as we're in the ship is sinking and we're deciding to row towards some resort island instead of the closest piece of land and and that we're funding I think only about what 60 percent of the money goes towards anything to do with roads I'm not sure out of the two billion I saw that 400 million has actually ended up on well the, roads. You, the first thing is that you know the since we're talking about the opposition the opposition would like for you to believe that Somehow, magically, transit has never been funded out of transportation dollars. No mass transportation. And that's not the case. They get about 20% uh, of their money through the state NTF. There's no change in the formula that distributes this in terms of what transportation gets. Okay. So that, that the idea that somehow this is different and that we're doing something that we haven't done in the past, I would submit to you, is incorrect. And again, I think this. You know your situation down here and how desperate you are for funding. I think that you have to look at where the money is going. And again, what you have that you haven't had in the past is a constitutional protection. I mean, that's as good as it gets. Yes, ma'am. How much is, is Grand Lake Township slated to get? I heard it was going to be like $20 per person out of this per year. You'd have to get the, I'm here to talk about roads and bridges, okay? The road, the way the county road commission mm -hmm. would, when this is fully funded, we would receive a total of about 37 million or 31 million dollars a year, which is about eight million more than we currently get. Okay, the money that comes to the township uh, regarding through revenue sharing, I would defer to the TMTA on that. I, I'm not prepared to speak on how much money you'll get from that perspective. And the same thing. Regards to the schools. It would follow the same formula, would it? As far as I know, it does. Yeah. Um, I did some checking today, and supposedly there's four other bills right now being proposed as an alternative, but the proposal one doesn't pass. I don't have copies of them here, but supposedly there's four other bills right now. Okay, that's but, great, but with all due respect, mm -hmm. if you're anybody here, if you, any any member of the Senate, any member of the House can drop a bill. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Having four different bills, there is there is no agreement mm -hmm. on either side of the fence in either House about what you do if this doesn't fly. Sure. I just have a question. I know you said that you know we would get an extra eight million. You would get an extra eight million on top of the thirty-one that you're getting now, right? Right. And so I know we only received about 
61,000, I guess, last year. Mm -hmm. And then probably we might receive not too much more, probably, right? Because there's only an extra 8 million. And when it spreads out, so we get maybe an extra $10,000, or is that a high figure or a low that's figure? A, I think that's a low figure. Okay. Okay. And I, and I know I know we're not going to get any more for the roads, okay? Mm -hmm. But my question is, we might get let's say fifteen to twenty thousand extra roads, so we'll go from sixty to twenty, okay? I mean sixty to eighty. Uh, but I think you said that part of this is going to go to the bridges, okay? Part of it would go when we what if this we have five bridges that we've identified right. in critical condition. Right. When this is fully funded. Right. Okay. Well, we would, in order to stay to implement this, my intention would be if it passed, we would look seriously at bonding for those seven bridges, or those right. five bridges almost immediately. Right. So I guess my point is, I know we're not going to get too much more for roads, but it sounds like we're going to get maybe enough to fix those five bridges. I would believe that there would, there would, when the money is distributed through the formula, okay, remember that there's part of it that will go. There's some of it that comes to us at the County Road Commission, there's right. some that comes to cities and villages, there's some that goes to MDOT. Right. And there is a portion of that that also goes through the county bridge or through the state bridge program. Right. Okay. You would see the same proportional increases in that as well. In the money that the state's providing for bridges. Right, but my question is, do you think we get the full amount to fix those five bridges or we get it just a bump in, like we're getting for our roads? No, I think we'll get enough to, to fix those five bridges. That would be an opportunity for us to. There's no way that I want to see a bridge closed. In right, the right, and, and, and I don't want to make money. So either, we're going so. to take the steps that are necessary, depending on what we have available to us, to keep right. that from happening. Especially since two of them are on primary roads, that has a major impact. Right, and so if it doesn't, if it's eight million, if that bridges, you get. You, you do not, if you do not get enough to do the bridges, then you probably still bond to fix it, and then that would be spread back through the county, or how would that work? Well, that would come at what we would bond usually on a bridge. We usually bond 20 years, and then we would incur the debt at the road commission. But isn't that passed on to Genesee County itself because we're using the roads? Or no, the, the for instance, the, the two that are primaries, right. we would pay for anyway. We pay 100% of everything that goes on on primary road. The road commission does. Right, but if you don't have enough money to do it, you have to bond for it, right? Well, if we bond for it. Right. We'll get the money to do it, and then we spread that that bond payment out with the interest over, say, 20 years. Right. That we would have the money to pay. There's a oh, okay. So there's enough cash flow to do that. In there's the enough cash flow to do that. Oh, it's not a cash. The issue is not a cash flow issue. The issue is the total size of the revenue. Right. Okay. So, go ahead. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I'm just asking. Okay. Uh, so those bridges are going to come out of that eight million. That you're getting? No. No. Okay, that's what I want. To so, there will be a, a there will be a portion that will come out. Mm -hmm. Okay, because as you know, there's a when we use the state dollars, there's a local match yeah. that's required, mm -hmm. but there will not be anything close to the total mm -hmm. replacement price. Okay. And I'm sorry, I, I know you're just the messenger. Okay. You're explaining okay. the bill to us, but um, one of my concerns is the cost too per family or household, and we're looking at. From what I've read, uh, the estimates are between $477 to $525 per household. And anybody that's seen the increase in their health insurance, uh, cost of living, what have you, it's, it's getting really tight. And I guess for me, I would, just as you mentioned, state government uh, has difficulty getting a lot of these things right. I would rather give that money locally than to see it go statewide um, for something for roads. I mean, I think. If we polled everybody in this room, everybody would agree that something needs to be done on the roads. I'm not sure that, uh, that most wouldn't agree with me that they would like to see the money go locally rather than to state government and have it dispersed amongst you know many other projects besides roads. Two things: <coughs> AAA figures. First of all, the average motorist last year spent uh, 371 dollars to repair their vehicle uh, for damages that were done to the roads. If you can off repairing the roads, will offset some of it. The second thing is, your point's well taken, but frankly, it's independent of time. We don't have the time 
Okay, if the legislature couldn't find 1.2 billion or 1.6 billion, I don't know how they're going to solve that future in future. And you obviously have much more confidence in them than I do. All I do is look at what's happened the past 17 years. And I'm not willing to roll the dice on that for Michigan's future. So that's 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 where I sit with the person. And I look at it from a business standpoint, that their transportation is one of the biggest things they look at. They've got to get their things to market. Yes. And if we don't have the bills, they won't be coming here. And again, it's interesting you brought up the four bills. I would encourage you to call each of those legislators and ask them very specifically, where will that money come from? How much is it? Where is this a one-time or reoccurring? And who else is sponsoring the bill with well, that's some other question, but it's not proposal one that you Okay. <laughs> well, the other thing I bring this good news is that I can tell you now that the door highway extension is now, as I told uh, Supervisor Hoffman, a regular project. Okay. So we're moving ahead with that. We had the first meeting with the firm concerning initiating the design process. I'll be working with the state le legislatures to secure the second year funding of $4.4 million. And then we'll be uh, putting in a grant request with the federal government for the third year funding. Uh, Dr. Daly, one of the concerns I had that somebody on social media had uh, one recurring link on okay. social media sites, they had mentioned that, you know, why are we building a new road when we can't maintain what we have now? Um, and I didn't know if you wanted to expound on that a little bit, that the money comes out of different pots, or how, how does that, I mean, is it taking away from road maintenance to, to build the extension? No, well, if you look at the global pie for North America, there's only so much between the U.S. and Canada that goes into transportation. Does it come out of that pie? Yeah, it's a reallocation of the taxpayer's dollars. The reason that you, only reason that you build new roads, there's only two reasons. The first one is national defense, and the second one is to, for economic development. And the reason that this, this is, I mean, the federal government takes care of the national defense issue. So from my perspective, the only reason you build new roads is because, is to support economic development. My understanding from what I've seen and listened to the presentation in the chamber is that when this is done, you're talking about 620 medical technology jobs that will be new. And that's the, that's the, that's those the direct jobs. That's not the second tier jobs. And so from my perspective, and I believe the state's perspective, uh, it makes sense to move along with this project. But the, the two funds are in different categories when they come down to us, and so they do not cross over. So McCandless Road isn't getting, not getting paid because we're, we're putting it in the door highway. It's no, that's not the case. So you indicated that the door highway extension, it's on the normal process. So what does that mean for Grand Blank Township as far as, it's not through the grant system anymore, it's all gonna be funded from? I didn't say that. Oh, okay, well I'm just trying to figure out when you, when you said the term that it was on the regular process, I just wanted to determine where we were trying to get there. When I say, it, when I say it's, it's a regular road project, what I'm saying is that it has moved off the, t off the burn, back burner from where it was unfunded to now we have the first year funding in hand, the second year funding is well along its way to being secured, and I think that will happen within the next four to five months. <coughs> and then we have a, a, a better than 60% chance that the federal grant, which is the last year of funding, the where it comes from and what the match requirements. So far, we've been very fortunate that <coughs> the first to the funding that we currently have in hand, there is no local match that's required, either from us or from you. Okay? You did contribute in kind because of your work with the sewer projects out there. And just as Genesis has contributed in, in kind through land contributions. But at this time, uh, there, in the first two years, there's no match that's foreseen. Second year funding, well, third year funding, we'll have to take a look at and see 
what the, t the framework of that program is going to be at the federal government. Because it's a, the, what the grant that we're going in for is one that we just received information on about six days ago. So if the, what, what is the timeline to start the actual construction on it? Maybe, yeah, I don't know. You know. It's probably, it's probably going to be 16. 16, okay. For the actual, you know, when you start yeah, to actually start 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 moving around and stuff like right. that. We're doing the design work now. We're doing the preliminary, of the uh, uh, environmentals that have to be done. And we're also making, we'll be also doing any right of way acquisition that we have. Yeah, because like our commitment, uh, I think the last quote we got from Rose was like 2.4 million to put in the sewers and the water stuff. Uh, that's on top, that's if we don't even have any of this other match. Well, thank you for that. Huh? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I haven't asked you, we haven't asked you for any additional beyond your contribution through the sewer. Well, I know, but uh, we work, you know, 2.4 million is, uh, that's not what we originally thought it was going to be, but uh, that's probably not even going to be the accurate figure when it gets to the end. Or, and you wouldn't have any, any information on that. No, if I did, I would share that with you. Right. But, uh, that's just the estimate at this point. So is that for the first two years also? Well, I don't know. That's what I was trying to determine. I'm not sure. I'll have to check with, you know, row engineering to find out whether, you know, if it starts at 16, well, if we have to put that everything starts at 16 or when we have to start this. Okay, well. Because that would have to be a bond process too because we don't have 2.4 million to put in this sewer. Well, the point, point is, is that well, I'll tell you we, what, will, we work with that with our, within our own community. Well, no, that's my point is I'm trying to figure out what it is. I know we have to pay for it one way or another. I'm yeah. just trying to determine the timeline. Let me talk, I'll tell you what, let me talk to the uh, engineer. I want to see uh, Commissioner or Supervisor Hoffman in, in a couple of weeks. And when we meet again for Rosa Bridges, I'll have that information for you in terms of, because it sounds like what your concern is, what's the timing of this? Well, yeah, because we're going to have to come up with 2.4 million. <coughs> it might not be immediate. I don't know if there's a lag time once the world starts. If you start in 16 and it's completed by the same year, right? Mm -hmm. So no, it, it, no, it will not. It, the construction that starts in 16 will probably not be completed until early 18. Oh, so it'll take two years then. It depends on again. Right. I mean, approximately. You know, our, our construction seasons are short. Right. So, it, it, so it could be shorter, it could be longer, depending on, depending what on when we, we can get started. The two right. big things that we're going through right now are right away acquisition and the environmentals. Right. And there would be a first phase and a second phase in that? Or you say the first two years, is that taken? No, it's just, you know, the first year is basically done. If the first year is the, if this is the first year. Okay. Okay. And so we're working, we're, that's where we're, we're doing the stuff that's very important. That, which is the design work, securing the right of way, securing, do, getting uh, compliance with all the environmental regulations. And all of that has to be done, plus the construction engineering, right. before those people show up out there to do the work. Right. In terms of time, you're probably, I want to guess that probably close to half of this project will be done before you start seeing trucks and everything. Is there any type of rendering of what that boulevard will look like? Because um, I'm sure Rural Engineering will provide one as part of their process. And believe me, as this project moves along, we are not going to leave the township in the dark. You've been a very important partner for us in Genesis in this. So we will be coming down. I would anticipate that we would, you know, hold some type of public meeting uh, once we know a little bit more about what the construction schedule is going to be, what the final outcome is going to look like. I can give you the direction maps, but I, there is no rendering of what it's right. going to look like. Well, I think the concern is for yeah. residents that live south of uh, Cook Road and what have you is that it's just going to be an extension of what we have, um, you know, between Hill and let's say Grand Blank Road. That it's just you know five lanes, you know, industrial on both sides, what have you. And from what I understand, it's going to be more of a boulevard. It isn't going to be uh, the highway that we see going north from, from 470 or from 75. I don't know if that's a correct assumption or not. It was designed originally that way. It will depend correct. on the money. Okay. 
that's where we are. <laughs> well, and, and again, <laughs> you know, I, I'm not going to make you, you know, in working with the township, one of the things that I've tried to do is be sure that when I make you a promise, I can keep it. I appreciate that. And because this, we have just entered the design phase of this, uh, I don't want to make a promise to you that turns out not to be true. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, what I will tell you is that we're going to keep you, the township fully informed about what happens because we recognize that this is an important project for you. We also recognize what the impact is uh, for you. And uh, we, we, we count on your support for this project. But does the township or residents have any say at this point yet in the project or is it pretty much what the federal government well, term, as far as the look of the and feel of that road is, is extended. I think what we have to do is defer that conversation. Uh, and the reason is because it, when you when we're using non-specific terms like look and feel, right, that becomes like beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Exactly. What one person's is an environmental compliance with an environmental regulation is not necessarily another person's view right. of that. So I would prefer. I think that's a discussion we need to have. I understand the importance of including the township and its residents in that discussion, but I want to be sure that when we have it, that we have the right information to give you. So there will be a process for that. Absolutely. Oh, we wouldn't undertake a process. Yeah. If you would look what we did, simply with the reconstruction of Miller Road, uh, that and that was a reconstruct within the existing roadway. We had a series uh, in that project will run probably six and a half million, not counting your contribution and Genesis contribution into that. We had a series of three public informational meetings with that. We were posting uh, schedule, work schedules. Once we started construction, we were putting them out by email on a day to day, on a daily basis, uh, so that people could coordinate with that. And I would assume we'll follow a similar process with the project of the scope. Okay. I just wasn't sure if we were too far down the road to uh, have those discussions, so I appreciate that. Going back to Proposal 1, we said that we would allow people from the audience to ask you questions, so is there anyone here that wishes to ask a question of Mr. Daly? I think Mr. Hurt is not Come on up here. Okay. We need, we need follow to the regular this. procedure. Yeah. Yeah. Follow the regular procedure, yeah. My name is Michael A. Yancho Sr. and I reside at 10640 Halsey Road. Um, Commissioner Daly, um, you didn't make any comments on the, um, the provisions within Proposal 1 to have a, a warranty on construction work for, uh, for the future roads. And I think that's a vital uh, piece of this. Uh, proposal that uh, we can hold uh, contractors feet to the fire if their roads fail. Okay. Go ahead and, <coughs> ahead and finish your comments. I did mention it down here at the oh, bottom, sorry. but you were absolutely okay. correct. That is an important provision. Um, another thing, when it, when it comes to vehicle uh, repairs, the cost of vehicle repairs, I'm not certain that, uh, and, and all, mm. you know, nothing against AAA, but uh, there are inevitably a number of, ro of vehicles out there that have sustained serious front-end damage and that are not being repaired. And those, those vehicles present an, an, an enormous hazard to all of our families out on the roads because those vehicles no longer have the ability to, uh, to uh, maneuver safely. And um, sooner or later, we're going to have you know, ball joint falling off and things of that nature while these cars are going down the road because those car repairs, you know, for those of us that can afford to have our cars repaired, that's great, but um, there's a number of people out there that have sustained a lot of damage to their tires, their wheels, and those things are not being repaired. Um, it's interesting to hear the comments about local roads versus um, township roads versus uh, whatever, Michigan roads, local roads, but as a township resident, I drive on all the roads in the other townships and municipalities around here, so I think it's important to see that all the roads that I might drive on, um, as I, as myself or my business or my family, that all those roads are in good repair. Um, and uh, Dort Highway, thank you, uh, Commissioner Daly, and anyone else that has helped to uh, push along that Dort Highway. Uh, 
proposal because um, that's going to present not only an opportunity for increased economic development in our area, but it's going to it's going to definitely contribute to the safety and safe travel of our school buses, our residents, and everybody else in this community once that's approved and are finished. Thank you. Thank you. Going along, definitely, Miss Town. Going along, with that, I think it's going to free up some traffic at Holly and Baldwin Road. Oh, that, absolutely. It'll, it'll and the Holly I seventy five interchange. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Plus the fact that, as you say, going back to the business, <laughs> they have talked to trucking places that they have been flooded with with problems, you know, because of of our our poor roads, and again would cause them to maybe move out someplace where they could take better care of the roads. Okay, uh, Ed, yeah. or do you have the women, either of you women want to say anything? Oh, no, 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 this is all confusion. It took, uh, th uh, what, 35 minutes to explain what the uh, talk is of all respect to you. You do a good job for us. You need money. We've got to get you money. Don't shoot the messenger. We've got to get it the right way. Um, but I have a copy of the ballot here, okay? Yeah. And the ballot language, okay, says nothing of who's getting what. Um, this is just another scheme for our government to get funding for other issues. And I'm not, I'm not saying pet issues, I'm just saying other issues like unfunded liabilities and good stuff like that. Some unfunded liabilities for teachers and that's supposedly part of that here. It just says some to increase school aid, okay? That's what the ballot says. No, I don't know what that means. It could be a penny, it could be the whole ball of wax. Um, there's a, according to the news, there's 11 issues in regards to this uh, ballot. And you don't really know what it, they are. It just says we'll make it better, could make it better, might. There's no defined anything here. The only thing that's defined in this is we are going to get a 16% increase in our sales tax. You can do the math later. <laughs> yeah. But it is. It's 16%. The ledger slaters will decide if and how much Genesee County gets. That's what's scary to me. Because this is going to be changed down the road. We talk about it, but it's kind of like our, and I don't say this because I don't hope they'll come back to haunt me, our fire and milage, the boards in the past agreed to give a half a mil. You don't really have to. It was just an agreement. That's what scares me here. But anyhow, they'll decide what the road commission gets, if anything. Then when you talk about the township, the road commission will decide if Grand Blank will get any. Okay? Let me spread it out where they want to. That is, if we get if we get enough money, we got to get money from our general fund to compensate what the road commission don't pay. When we do a road, you've got to cough up your share, right? What if we don't have the money in general fund? We leave this on the table then. Okay. We've done it before. Um, and that's the portion the road commission is not getting enough funding for. So we take it on a general fund anyway. The more I think about this, the more confusing it gets, the more complicated it gets. It, it could be done very simple. Let's get a millage for Genesee County Roads. We know it'll stay here. We know he's taken care of. In fact, I think it was seven years ago that you were sat back over there and I sat over there. And that's what I wanted done. And the township wanted to take money. That's what we got to do is put money in his pocket. And we know it's there. We know it's not paying on funded liabilities. We're not going to, for some other interest. If another interest has a problem, let's 
have the legislators come to us and tell us about it. Let's do one thing at a time. So that's why I really can't support this, okay? It, it, it's too confusing, it's not defined. And something you mentioned though, John, was about national defense, that's the roads are for. That was when the roads were built. That's before we had things like we do in Iraq and Afghanistan. We're there. If something happens in this country, I guarantee you we won't use roads for it. We will be using other methods to, to transport our military. So the infrastructure of roads is basically for the people to move in our economy. Okay, there's two, Thank th you. two things that I wanted to correct you on. Okay? And the first one is, is that it, this is constitutional. The part that goes to the roads is the constitutional thing. So it is a guarantee. Not on the ballot. Hmm? Not on the ballot. On the bill itself, it is. I'm not voting on a bill. I'm voting on a ballot. Actually, from my understanding, that uh, if they're going to, as soon as this law were to pass, or if this proposal was to pass, the legislature is going to have to meet immediately to increase the amount of road funding because the proposal actually is a decrease to what the state has proposed for in the budget for road funding. And so they're going to have to go back in and fix a number of issues that this actually undoes. And one of the things is it underfunds the roads to begin with. So they're going to have to go back in and add money to it. I think it puts like 400 million and I think they need like 900 million or something like this. So and they're going to have to go in immediately and, and bump the amount of money. It's very complicated. It's like if you donate to, let's call this a charity. When you donate to a charity, you ask how much money is really going to the people you're trying to help. I see 60 cents on a buck if it happens. If it happens. Thank you. Can I respond? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Two things. First of all, uh, consequences of it not passing. Tomorrow morning when the sun's out, they'll take a picture of your road. That's probably as good as it'll get for the next three or four years. Okay, the second thing is, again, uh, I had an article that was printed statewide on statewide inline. You got 543 comments from about 120 people. No plan B. Okay? If you don't like this project, that's fine. But don't 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 vote roads. Don't hurt Michigan's motorists with their roads and bridges because you don't like what the legislature did. That's a separate issue. Deal with your legislature on that separate place. Thank you. There was one other thing, Ed, and that was by by state law. Okay, the only thing that we could do would be local roads. Is that right, John? As far as millage, mm -hmm. as far as a millage type. Mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, if we if we put out a millage, it would only cover local roads. Your millage, if, you, if you're talking about we the township. Well, either township or city, we have no no deal over private. Well, you can your. The money that you gain from, that you would, if you had a countywide millage, mm -hmm. could be used on both primary and local roads. Okay. okay. It all depends on how the millage is written. And I would think that you would want, you word it so that you've got the maximum flexibility yeah. uh, to maintain the road system. Uh, so that's a simple matter. Some places, that when they have written it in the past, they have written it so that it was targeted right at local roads. And that's usually a township millage rather than a county mm -hmm. millage when that occurs. Is there a discussion on a county millage? No, there's been discussion. Mm -hmm. Sorry. There's been discussion on a countywide millage, but certainly nothing serious. And certainly nothing with the county board of commissioners. I mean, it's been this type of discussion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak to them? Or ask a question, John? In that case, we'll move on. Uh, we're going with public comment. Uh, we think we could, is there anybody that wishes to make public comment that doesn't have to do with the roads? 
Hearing none, we'll move on and go to the uh, review the Township Board agenda for the meeting Thursday. And that would be a recommendation of the Planning Commission to amend Articles 2, 3, and 4 of the Zoning Ordinance. And then, Jill, I'd like you to speak to that, please. Good evening. Good evening. Um, for the last several months, the Planning Commission has been considering uh, how to revise the zoning ordinance to accommodate better some of the uh, uses surrounding folks that might be aging in the community. So we know that we've seen um, applications for development for skilled nursing facilities, um, and there's been a little bit of confusion over things that are brought before the Planning Commission in terms of terminology. What's assisted living mean? What's an adult foster care? What is dependent care? What's congregate care? What's a nursing home? So we tried to, over the last several months, go through and look at the state licensing requirements. We started there. Let's use the same terminology here that the state is using when they license facilities. And so we've created language that, that mirrors that. So at least when someone is coming before us and they have a license for a certain type of facility, we know exactly what they mean. Um, and then additionally, trying to create the definition that provides examples so that we might call it, as we have here, specialized housing, and then we go on to say examples of that would include, and then we list those out. Um, what the Planning Commission ended up uh, recognizing is that really all of those uses in terms of housing um, folks that need some additional assistance or in a congregate or dependent care facility is, well, two things. One is they're not always over age 55, the way the current ordinance was defining that. There are folks that maybe have um, other reasons why they would be in a rehabilitation facility. Maybe they have an accident, maybe they have some sort of need for rehabilitation. Um, and then to define that is strictly, I think, by common practice, and we wouldn't exclude it from the ordinance, but um, making it clear that that's not really relevant in terms of a land use decision. Um, so we wanted to try to accommodate that. And then also recognizing that from a land use perspective, there's not much difference between dependent care, assisted living, nursing homes, and that. And so to um, kind of consolidate those all under the umbrella of specialized housing um, was the direction that the Planning Commission wanted to go. And we retain the um, some of the other standards, like parking standards, might be a little bit different between those uses, and so those will still remain as they are. Um, so you'll see in the proposed ordinance language um, a couple other definitions. Um, it was brought to our attention that hospice might be a term that could be used, um, could be defined better, and so that's not a facility necessarily, but it's a program. And so we would again use licensing language from the state of Michigan on that just to be consistent in our, in our language and our discussion. On the other side, we've talked about daycare issues as well. So we wanted to recognize, and the, the current zoning ordinance does recognize adult daycare um, as a land use, except that it was a little bit confusing why it was listed out separate from child care. Child care had certain standards. Adult daycare didn't really have any standards. Um, and it seemed to make sense to the Planning Commission, again, to treat those as similar uses. There's not really much difference between a child care facility and an adult daycare facility. Um, what we learned is that there are, as there are for child care facilities, the state of Michigan licenses those, and those are, have certain standards that they must adhere to. And the zoning ordinance recognizes that and I think is compatible with those requirements. But adult, adult daycare does not have a licensing requirement by the state. Some states do, Michigan does not. But Michigan does offer um, reimbursement. And when they do have facilities that are, that are receiving reimbursements from the state, those facilities do have standards that they have to meet. But many may or may not choose, operators may or may not choose to um, go that route. And so whether they do or don't, I think the Planning Commission recognized that it's a good idea to have just a couple standards in place relating to um, sort of the safety and comfort and well-being of those folks that might be in a care service facility. Um, and so those are provided there in section, the amended section 4.29. The Planning Commission did hold a public hearing on this on March 5th, I believe it was. And um, there were a couple of folks that came to speak about that, um, particularly in terms of um, care providers who may be interested in looking at facilities. 
in Grandland Township. And we know that that is something that, that not just is impacting here, folks here in the township, but really all around the region, the state, and the country where you're faced with um, our population getting older. And so we do need to be accommodating and, and looking for things that we can do to make it easier to provide the services that people will need so that they can continue to remain here in the community as long as they wish um, and really age here in the community. So I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Well, it sounds really good because I know that those, yep, you know, the, the way we had it, the definitions were confusing. Yeah, I thought it was very good too. I just, this is just a minor question. I know on the adult care center, they had uh, a number in there, you know, it says less than 12 or whatever, and that was all deleted. But I guess, is that is the building actually going to determine the number of people in it? It probably does, right? It does. And so that's why they didn't need that, yeah, right? right? We have the standards there. And they, they weren't really in place for um, the child care facility either when they're not in a residential area. So it looks like, like you said, is you took out things that were duplicated and confusing, mm -hmm. and then like the ones that didn't have it, any rules, you put them down another rule, so now we're kind of enforcing new rules on, on places right. like, and, that didn't right. have any rules mm -hmm. at all, right? Exactly. And not, but not making them too, um, too strict or out of line with what maybe the state would require in terms of its... Right, but more common sense, more so that at least we've got people yeah. in, in facilities safe. in our township that are safe, Right. You know, reasonably safe instead of letting them do whatever they want to do. Right, but not, again, and not making them so burdensome that people won't want to do business here. Right. So yeah. Right. But anyone that wants to, anyone that wants to have their mom or dad in there wants right. them to have that mm -hmm. type of care, mm -hmm. so it's not unreasonable. But at least now we've got some control over it. Where in the past we did not. Right. Mm -hmm. okay, that's that's what I thought. And I thought you did an excellent job. So. I think especially, you know, in this day and age, we're seeing. More. within our township so much more development yeah. in those areas that, that are included here it's it's wise that we yeah. have clear language so that when yeah. things are proposed we don't have to try and draft something on the fly very good, good. any other questions then we're set for thursday All right. Good. looks like you're going to be up here for a while jeff <laughs> <Okay. Good. laughs> Okay, in request to purchase CityWorks software, how does that help? Um, the CityWorks server, or the CityWorks software that we use now is, um, it's basically, it's only used by the DPW right now. And some of us probably know how it's used, those who've worked in Township for a while. But it's basically our work order software. It's how we track everything we do in the DPW. Every job goes out with a work order. Um, Right now, we use a desktop format of it, meaning every computer that has a software has a user license and a fee. Um, by going to CityWorks Server, we're going to get rid of those desktop licenses and have a web-based platform, basically. What this also is going to accomplish, and the thing I'm most excited about, is it's going to make it mobile for us. Um, we'll be able to take this on the road with us. Right now, uh, when there's a job, if we require a set of plans, we have to make sure either A, we have them before we leave Township Hall, or we have to come back to them. A lot of times, we have to come back to Township Hall and get them. With CityWorks Server, we can access that out on the road with our phones, um, computers, whatever it may be. This also enables me and my clerical staff to submit our the work orders to the technicians via their smartphones. There will not be any more paperwork orders, which is a huge burden right now. We have um, technicians that don't necessarily care for filling out paperwork. That's life for some of us, but when they're out on the road, they find it kind of difficult. Um, this is also going to help out with the clerical staff. The technicians will complete the work. They'll fill out the work order right there on their phones and submit it to the clerical staff where they can review it and then close it. They don't have to wait for the paperwork to come back in and then you know, thumb through it, make sure everything's there, read the handwriting, everything else. It's all done over the computer. It, it won't eliminate the paperwork 100%, but 90% probably. Um, the biggest thing is the mobility that we're going to gain out of this. 
it's, it's something that we've been batting around for a long time, I know that, and uh, we're ready to move on it now. So, you know, in the 20th century, the 21st century, I'm sorry, this is where we're at. We, we have a very advanced GIS system in the township, more than I've seen. Mm -hmm. what, what difference will our residents notice by buying this software? Our residents, I mean, I think they'll notice a difference in our efficiency and our effectiveness. Um, there, there are a lot of times where we're out in the field, we're responding to a resident complaint, and we don't have all the information with us. Whereas if, if I go up to you know your house, you call me about a sewer plug, I can pull everything up right on my laptop in my truck. I can see when we did maintenance on that line, when we cleaned it last, if there was ever a problem before. If we ever responded to your house before, maybe you haven't lived there for a long time. Um, you know, if there was a sewer line <coughs> up previously. I can have all that at my fingertips. Or if a, a water line breaks and you're out there, you can Absolutely. see where, where the water line is. Absolutely, and it's all documented on the GIS system also. So we know that there's been patch problems. Um, it, I think efficiency and effective, effectiveness is a big part of this. Might we save some money on staff time? Oh, absolutely. I feel that we will, big time. Uh, once again, you know, just the, just the clerical part of it. Uh, you know, I have one clerical person that all she does is work on work orders. Okay. Uh, doing it over the computer, I think, is going to improve efficiency big time. So we won't have to lay anybody off because we're so efficient. No, I don't think we'll have to lay anybody off. We have plenty of work to do, trust me. Uh, I know it's going to take, or it's going to make the GIS department their life a lot easier also, as far as updating the systems and that. Um, the price is, is, is a little up there. We have budgeted $25,000 for this year um, for the implementation, and it's going to be about $25,000. And I provided the two price quotes. One is for the city works licenses themselves, we have to buy the initial licenses, and they are more expensive than what we are using now. Um, the other price is for North Arrow Technologies to come in and actually do the integration, which is transferring all the information over and then do training. Mm -hmm. So there is a you know that implementation price. And then there is also the ongoing maintenance fee that's going to go up. Um, it goes from, I think, about $11,000 to about $20,000 a year. We will, it, it's actually only about a $5,000 rise because we're saving money on some of our ArcMap licenses that we're able to get rid of. So we don't have those individual licenses anymore. So are we using CityWorks right now? Or is oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we live by CityWorks. So this is a better it is. version of it. It is. It's absolutely 100% better. Um, it's it's going to make everything more customizable. Right now, everybody sees the same screens. I can have a different screen than what uh, you know Dave Hobson has or uh, Maria Hobson has or Amy Wilkinson. Okay. We all look at it in different ways and use it in different ways, and we can customize to that respect. No? Does everybody have a computer, a laptop in their truck with them, or is it just the... No, we don't. Uh, nobody has a... Well, we have laptops. We have our, our tough books. Yeah. That, I think we have two or three of them that we do take out on right. occasion uh, whenever we do water and sewer station maintenance weekly, and then uh, whenever... Uh, I don't want to myself. We were, yeah. I think that's about it. And then what, when we do sewer cleaning and stuff. Right, because I think not everybody has smartphones out there, so I know there'd be a little bit increase in cost, because if I don't have a smartphone, then I either have to use that other computer thing. All my technicians have smartphones. Okay, I don't think they do, but... Um, yeah, they do. Okay. I, I, I made sure of that before <laughs> I even, even uh, considered this, because that's, that's the biggest part of the puzzle here. Is the work order part. All right, and it's not that much, it's just that I thought there were a few of them that didn't have it, but yeah. if you've already checked it out, that's fine. Yeah. But, but, uh, yeah, they absolutely do. And that, and that's a piece of technology that we have to have. That's the minimum part, is at least a smartphone. Mm -hmm. um, there may be down the road where we want to get Dave Hobson a tablet or something so that he can, because another benefit is that he can submit work orders and look at work orders out in the field. 
we can record them right then. Things do not slip through the cracks, and occasionally things do slip through the cracks. Um, but that's not now. Definitely, I haven't considered that yet. But it's something that we may look at in future coming years. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, I, I think that if it's going to save this much time and bring us up to date, I, I'd be in favor of it. Right. Okay. The only other question I had is, I know you talked about that Cedar Works storeroom thing, but that's a separate function, right? Or yeah. Or is that part of this? That is Correct. part of the 25. That would be an additional package? I, no, um, we currently pay, we currently have storeroom, so it wouldn't be an additional. It wouldn't? No. We, so that way we've people's. already paid for the licensing for storeroom and we've been using it, maybe not to its full capacity. Okay. Um, whatever, you, whatever you said, um, purchasing of a license, we're, um, we currently have nine um, licenses for city works. Um, to get it to everybody out in, um, out in the field, uh, I don't know how we increase it by six licenses. I think so. Um, we would have to convert our existing nine licenses over to mobile because everybody has to be on mobile. Okay. So it would be a $200 increase for those nine and then a $1,200 purchase of its additional six licenses. So. That's with the proposed system or with the existing system? With, with the proposed system. But that's all part of the 25, right? Because he's already built all that in. Right. Um, Right now, our licensing for City Works, our annual maintenance, will be due the 1st of July. So if we wait to that, to that point, then, then we'd be paying the $20,000. Right now, if we, we can go ahead and purchase that, and I think they might um, prorate it based off of our, uh, our remaining license. But if we just wait and just do it all at once, we're, we're good for the entire year. So we currently have the storeroom. So the storeroom does have maintenance on all our MXUs yeah. and all that stuff. So right now you could go in there and tell me how many X MXUs are allowed. Well, I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know that we're using it to that okay. capacity right now, but we will certainly try. Right, but there's no additional fee because no. we can if we can get to it, then we can utilize that and have a more efficient system, right? right? Correct. And getting back to the to the um, citizens and what they would see. My intent is to put a citizen's request app on our website where, you know, if somebody has a water main break, they can go to that app, type in their problem, and it will automatically send a request to, to the DPW clerk, and she could go ahead, and it might reduce the number of calls that we might receive. Very good. So, I would, I mean, there's some ability to do that. Um, yes. So I have seen examples of that. At the MTA conference, actually, with the software that people go online and report yeah, like early on from their street. So that way, they don't have to leave a phone call. They mm -hmm. actually go in and say, "Here's my location. Yeah. Here's the problem," mm -hmm. and then DPW will run with it. Yeah, they just start it, but then we do our normal procedures after that, right? right. But it's done more quickly, right? Right. And I think the, the detail you put in the uh, request is, is very good too. And you you have actually in here a number of the things that you mentioned that that our citizens will, will receive right. from this, but I, I just wanted for the record for you to say it. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> okay. yeah, because that, that was very helpful, because there is a lot in here, and it did answer a lot of questions, uh, and it makes it more understandable, so we do appreciate all the detail that you did give us. I, absolutely. I, uh, no problem. concur with that. Okay, thank you. Sure. Oh. Now I'm down to the hiring <laughs> seasonal employees, part-time seasonal employees. Right. Um, as you know, the past few years we've, we've lost three full-time laborers for one reason or another, and they have not been replaced. Um, it, it's becoming increasingly difficult in the summer months when the majority of our work occurs to get that work done with just nine full-time technicians. I don't believe I have the capacity. I don't have enough work in the winter time right now to hire any more full-time technicians. It's hard enough keeping them going, but that is the minimum number I can have for snow plowing operations. Um, we do keep them working, but it gets difficult at times. Basically, what we're looking to do is hire seasonal laborers uh, for the spring, summer, and they'll probably spill in the fall a little bit to complete our major projects, such as sewer cleaning and televising, curb box locating, 
uh, valve turning, those types of things that we do over and over again. They're monotonous jobs, but they have to be done. Uh, we also have a lot of other work out there, stuff that we've realized over the winter time or last fall that has to get done. And these employees will, will be able to help us with that. They'll be paired with full-time technicians um, to give them a hand, basically, as laborers. Uh, this is the best way to go. This is the way 9 of 10 DPWs do it, they hire seasonal people. So um, that's what this request is. And I believe I have uh, our pay range is going to be between $10 and $12 an hour. We're not looking for highly skilled people. We're looking for labor, basically. But we do, we would like people with some DPW knowledge. Um, I figure with uh, the finance department's help, our maximum financial implication will be about $5,000 per employee this year. Uh, that's based on 29 hours per week, because per week, that's all we can uh, work them per statute. Actually, I found out no, that seasonal workers, they can work more than that. Okay, I didn't know that. I did no, a lot of, I just found it out. Okay, I did a lot of research <laughs> before, I, before I put this together, yeah. and the IRS's website is not easy yeah. to navigate, and neither is the uh, um, Affordable Care Act. Right. <laughs> but uh, I would love for you to share the information yeah, I with will. me. I just got it yesterday. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Well, Still, it we're going to try and keep within yeah. this budget, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, it yeah. could be plus or minus depending mm -hmm. on our workload and uh, how long we're able to keep these employees. Right. How soon would you hire them? Uh, as soon as I can. Uh, I'm looking at advertising for two to four weeks um, with this type of position. Usually, we only advertise for about two weeks, and we'll get a significant amount of applications. So, uh, and then as soon as they can. Start, but our work is, is building up and approaching, so we we'll want to get going on. I would be in favor of it. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. I think we're in time and trust you as a trustee when we had five seasonal workers. Oh, absolutely. Two, two is, is um, yeah. very reasonable. Madam Chair, with, with your um, concurrence and the, the board's concurrence, I think that we've, we've always had a policy where if a department had um, wants to hire part-time employees and has that That's available right. in the budget, then we haven't we haven't required board action. I'm glad that Mr. Sears brought this to you, particularly in light yeah. of the fact that we we have been able to learn a little more detail about the possibility of them working more than 29 hours. Um, and so, if the board feels that uh, this is in keeping with the policy of allowing the department had to proceed, um, we can remove it from the agenda if you want. Can leave it on if you want. Yep. Uh, whatever your pleasure. I'll be asked to be removed from the agenda. Okay. I agree with that. Yeah, I do too. Well, that's fine. I, I think it's. I would like to see it on there, but that's fine. It doesn't matter. He's got the authority. But I think he was just trying to yeah. trying to show um, the, need. Yeah. The, the need as well as be forthright, and that way everybody mm -hmm. there's not there's no question that he's doing this. Mm -hmm. And, and this is uh, and there's labor. a record of it. They yeah. have not filed. If you yeah. don't put it in the file, there's no record anymore. Yeah. And, and this is something we haven't utilized in the past few yeah. years. It's right. been some and, time. So. And I don't mean any disrespect by removing it from the agenda. I just yeah. oh, absolutely. Out of yeah. 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 for his position. Mm -hmm. Right. So is it? Does it come off the agenda yeah. for Thursday? Yes. Okay. Like, we just need a consensus, which we have. Yeah. It was sounded. Unanimous-ish. <laughs> okay. Um, and then the, the, yeah. the independent contractor, do you want to discuss that? Okay. Yeah, um, yeah well, the request, you see the request from um, Mr. Sears regarding the uh, independent contractor. Uh, with an effort, and actually, if you want to ex explain, uh, Jeff, what you have in mind regarding the request, the, the mechanics of it we, we yeah, may address yeah, uh, because I have I, re I offered some legal advice on that, which we'll talk about in executive session. But if you want to introduce it to the topic and let them know oh, what sure. you need it for and why. Absolutely. Um, in, in the past few months since I've been here, um, I've discovered a, a shortfall in clerical staff. Um, not in the DPW, not just in the DPW. We know we have our moments. We seem to be well-staffed. 
um, but more importantly in the building department and in the planning and zoning department. Um, we all we have Jake Travers who is currently a, a part-time employee, he started out here as an intern from uh, U of M or Baker, one of the two, I'm not sure. Um, and he's, he's worked out, he's exceptional. He's a, he's a very good employee, he's a smart, and uh, we'd like to keep him around. But we're kind of, once again, uh, bound by legislation, I guess, the Affordable Care Act, that we can't have him work more than 29 hours per week because he is a regular township employee. Uh, so we discussed, in, able, in order to cover these shortfalls of clerical staff, making Jake an uh, independent contractor, um, basically giving him a contract with the township just like we would anybody else, any other contractor. Um, he would invoice us for his work. That way he's able to work more with the township. The reason I'm bringing this to you is because I believe Jake would, Jake's contract would fall under my direction, basically. He would report to me. He's currently one of my employees. Uh, the DPW is paying him. He's doing some clerical work for me, and he's uh, also doing, he's doing some easement research and working with our cross-connection program. And I believe the intent is that he'll still, his contract will be supervised by myself. Um, he would be working primarily on the lawn mowing? Correct. Uh, his function this summer would be to the grass and weeds ordinance enforcement. Uh, which would be paid by the building department, so he would be working for them, but I'd still be supervising his contract. Okay. So we're going to talk a little bit about it in executive session? And, uh, yeah. Correct. Okay. We should leave this out for Thursday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good idea because we did have another person that was doing part of it, and of course he's no longer with us, yeah. which is part time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Jake already knows a lot of the information because yeah. luckily that employee did show Jake some of the internal stuff. And so it's a, it's something we need drastically, and luckily we got somebody in the in house that already knows what to do. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a it's a great opportunity, and it's and it's nice for Jake that way he'll get a lot more hours, uh, which would be good for him too. So. Okay, and now we're down to Hollywood Sewer Pump. Jake, you want to talk about Hollywood Sewer Pump Station? My last thing, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so we discussed previously the Holly Road lift station. Mm -hmm which is located approximately across from Genesis. That's the best description I can give you. This is a, an aging system, probably original to our sewers, and it is in uh, pretty bad shape, mostly due to road salt. It has a steel can, and the road salt, the overspray from it is just, it's eroded the steel really bad. Um, so we've been looking at replacing the station or possibly eliminating it. Uh, Row Engineering has been looking into that for me and we have concluded that we can eliminate the station um, with a significant cost savings. Might I add, we had about $750,000 budgeted and Row is thinking that it can be done for around $400,000, probably less. Uh, there's c contingencies built in there that we probably won't realize. Um, if you've looked over the map that I provided, the, what we're going to do is take that station out and make the sewer gravity basically and run a line down Woodridge, Woodridge Drive onto Genesis property where we'll tie into the trunk line. Uh, we will have to secure an easement right of way mm -hmm. from Genesis. I don't see any issues with that. Row will prepare those documents and the township will present them to them. That should be fairly straightforward. Um, the reason we're here tonight is hopefully to gain approval for Row to proceed with the design and engineering of this project. Um, their estimate is $31,650 and I did include that. Uh, and that is for the design work to engineer it. Uh, what else do they have listed? Yeah, do, we're saving that much money. We're, say, we're, we're saving a lot more than that, uh -huh. correct. Um, but that was not including their initial yeah. construction. Uh, so they estimate. bore under the road, they want to just run the track. Correct, we'll bore underneath Holly Road and then it'll be open cut from there all the way to the trunk line. Uh, it's going to eliminate the maintenance of that station. It's not a real active station. Um, 
there's plenty of capacity in the system for this. So uh, this is a good project. It's going to save us money in the long run. Anytime we can eliminate sewer stations, the better off we are, especially this one. It's Not really unsafe. Not backwards, but it probably couldn't have been done originally. I would imagine why they have a pump there. Or? Probably not because I don't think Genesis was there and this, I don't think the sewer yeah, was, was all there. But I don't know the history on it, right. obviously. But uh, I don't think everything was there, so yeah, that we right. could have done it originally. And I, I think you also mentioned that this is going to, when it bypasses going down a different way, it's going to give more, more uh, capacity. capacity to the other side down by Magnum and the other buildings because instead of going that way, it's being transferred. That's true. Way. Yeah, right, right now it travels east. Right. Um, it connects into Baldwin Road and then we're basically taking that capacity. It's not much because, like I said, that station, I don't remember the exact flow data on it, right. but it, it runs like once a day or something like that, and there's not very much tidage. There's, there's a lot of vacancy right there right now, but uh, as things heat up on that corner, that vacancy, you know, and all those office buildings right there along Holly Road between where the pumps station is mm -hmm. and Ball Road, there's a lot of office space in there that could be filled. Oh, yeah. Right, mm -hmm. right. And I think mm -hmm. the, the majority of the mm -hmm. affected mm -hmm. area that I look at is uh, it's from really from the pump station north to the expressway. Oh. That's all it serves. Oh, Arby's okay. is yeah. the very last customer on that line. Mm -hmm. uh, there is some vacant land back mm -hmm. in there, but there's not much buildable vacant yeah. land back there. So it stops at Arby's. It doesn't go across the subdivision, not across the expressway. No, no, it stops right there at Arby's. So yeah. Arby's is actually the last. So mm -hmm. last point. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, every day, I'm more and more impressed. With <laughs> <you>. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're doing a fantastic job. Thank you. Okay. So we, I think we've had all the questions answered. Thank you very much. I would concur with Chris, too. Yeah. Can I make a quick mm -hmm. public comment yes. for the public? Um, right now we have start, this is mainly for you, Ed, because you're about our only public here, but, <laughs> but for the camera too, in case anybody watches at home. We've started to put our board packets online to the, to the public on the website. So good, I didn't know that. Yeah. I'll look for them in the morning. Mm -hmm. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. So the detail on everything we're discussing is... Yeah, is so people know yeah. what we're yeah. talking about yeah. when they get here. When they come on Thursday. You, can, you, can, you will look them up and come on Thursday then. But sometimes there could be a change, so yeah. it's possible that yeah. the one on Thursday is a little bit different. Yeah. 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 Okay. And we try to get them on yeah. fr the Friday before yeah. the Tuesday meeting. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so we're going to you, Dave, on the well, we got yes. yes, thank you. Uh, item number F, which will be item E, I think, on uh, Thursday night. We have the tentative settlement agreement for the IAFF contract, and this is the culmination of, of a lot of things that, that we've been talking about, and, as, and actually the full-time firefighters have been talking about, the assistance of the chief, who I see is in the audience mm -hmm. tonight. And so uh, there may be questions that you may have, which we can address in our executive session, but uh, that's on our agenda for, for Thursday night, and hopefully yeah. we'll wrap up a long uh, and productive process, yeah. frankly. Um, and so expect to, to see that uh, Thursday night. If you have any questions tonight, we can address them in our closed session. And if you're inclined, uh, we would entertain an executive session right. at this point in time to, to consider a uh, written attorney opinion. Um, I appreciate that. I'll make the motion that we go into executive session to consider attorney's written opinion. Second. Okay. Um, Scott? Yes. Myself, yes. Mrs. Hoffman? Yes. Um, Earl? Yes. Okay. And we don't expect action afterwards. So we'll